design of the exam has 10 simulations. These simulations are attempts at trying to find 10 different situations that entry to practice therapists may find themselves in. There are five to eight sections per simulation, and each of those sections have got three components to them. Let's talk for a moment about the calibration process. This is an exam, let's be honest. So every time you're in the simulation, which is reflecting the real world, you're going to be presented with some options. What is it that you want to do at this time to get information from the client or to make decisions? All of those options may or may not be the most important thing to do at this time. It's going to be of key importance that you read the stem very carefully to find out what is my purpose here before you select an option because all of the options have a calibration. So the calibration process refers to each of the options that you are presented with within the simulation. Every time you select an option, you're either gaining points, losing points, or occasionally it's a benign, it's a zero. Now a good strategy, because it's a test, is to say, right, let's look at all of the options and which ones do I know for sure, definitely, absolutely are essential. Click those. Because remember, as soon as you click an option, you cannot unclick it. Just like in the real world, you can't say something to a client and then suddenly erase it and put it back in your mouth as though it never happened. So the test functions in the same way as the real world in that regard. What you want to pick are the ones that you see as strongly facilitative and mildly facilitative, and you want to avoid the ones that are detrimental in any way. Pick up as many positives as you can, avoiding the negatives. Yeah. And remember, all of those options might be effective at one point or another, but you're asking yourself in this calibration process, what is it that's most facilitative at this time for my purpose? What do I already know? What's my goal? So this is the concept sample that you'll find in your resource manual. It's Lucia, and you're a therapist. This is the scenario piece that I mentioned earlier. This is who came in through your door just now. You're a therapist in group private practice. This is your first meeting with a new client. Uh, this, her name's Lucia. On her intake form, she tells you she's 32, recently separated. She has two school-aged children, been separated for seven years. Her family doctor suggested that she try psychotherapy to address what he described to her as the early signs of depression. Now on the exam, you'll see a piece that says, now go to section A. And you click these sections and they will tell you what happens next. And there you see those options. Remember, these are the options that have got the calibrations of pluses and minuses. And at the top, you can see there's that context that I was saying you have to be so careful about that stem. They're asking you in your first meeting with Lucia, what information would best assist you in determining potential directions for therapy at this time, not two weeks down the road, not as a homework assignment, but at this time, this is your first meeting and you can select as many as you consider. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. I'm gonna pick client self-awareness. Now I can't unclick that, that's forever. And up pops how the client responds. So you can see what's happening. You're beginning to create for yourself a whole pile of information from the client as you start selecting some of these options. Let's say you picked prior mental health treatment and you find out that she's never had any history of mental health services. Important to know, right? Because uh, if, if she is somebody who has a history of mental health services and she found it entirely intrusive and she was non-compliant and didn't like 
what was being done and she tells you what kind of therapy it is, that gives you an indicator of where you might want to go in your therapy with her. So all of them are going to do that same thing. Every time you select an item, then you're going to have more information popping up. As I said earlier, remember, not all of those options are going to be correct for this time based on the STEM. Not all of them are going to be wrong either. They're all going to be calibrated from a plus three to a minus three. Let's look at section B. Here's another one where you're selecting as many as you consider indicated. We're looking for what would be indicated at this time. This is at the conclusion of your first meeting. So let's say you selected refer to a medical doctor. Well, she's not going to respond. I would suggest to you that that's probably calibrated negative because she just came from her medical doctor. And that competency there has to do with being in the present moment with the client and listening carefully. That active listening piece is critically important there. She's not going to want to be referred back to the medical doctor. She just came from there. So once again, every time you select something, something's going to pop up. Each of those options has a calibration attached to it. You're either gaining marks or losing marks as you go. Section C is another example. Now you can see how the simulation is moving you through therapy sessions, right? As you prepare for the next session, which of the following actions would be helpful in planning for collaborating with your client? Again, you can select as many. Section D is a little bit different. Here's one where you can only choose one item. And you, again, you can't go back. You can't change your mind. As soon as you click an option, that's the option you've got. At the beginning of this session, you notice that Lucy is noticeably thinner. She looks tired. She says she nearly didn't come. She's been having more trouble caring for herself and her children. What do you do? You can only choose one. Well, you could connect with social services. You could explore patterns of behavior, conduct a risk assessment, refer her to a medical doctor. Let's say you did a risk assessment, assessment completed. Now, if you selected that, you would never get to select any of the other items, right? They wouldn't be available to you. It would say, now go to section E. Let's, Let's say you connect client with social services and she'll say, not interested. Right? Just don't want to do it. But you can't choose another one. You can only choose one item in this section. So that's why it's so very important to look at the stem and to figure out what is it that I'm selecting. Here's another one, section E, where we're seeing a whole pile of options. And when we look over to the side, you're going to see the same options. You're going to see the same calibrations from plus three to minus three and a, a multitude of competencies that are being considered as you go through those options for the client. Now let's look at that section E another way. Let's figure out why they would be calibrated the way they are. So. One of the first options, I'll go back so you can see, it says suggest the client use the agency 24 hour. I'm just taking the items from the left hand column there and putting them on the left hand column of this chart. So the option is suggest she use the agency 24 hour phone number. You can see the competency areas that are being tested right there. The calibration is a plus two, but why? The answer is because it aligns with the ethical code and it enhances autonomy. Maybe you offer your off hour phone number but have no direct contact. That's a minus two, it's a boundary violation. So you can see that each of those options has got a calibration, it has a competency area that it's addressing, and then there's a rationale according to the competency profile attached to it. Now every single option throughout every single section of every single simulation has got this factored into it. Here's section F. This is the last part of Lucia about uh, 
termination sessions. This is just prior to it. She calls and she cancels. And based on the information gathered to date and your therapeutic alliance, what's the most important thing to do at this time? Most appropriate. So we can't take it back. So make sure that it's the one that you want, the one that's most critical. So just as a recap, each assessment contains 10 simulations. Each simulation contains multiple competencies in context. Each of them are calibrated based on potential for harm, and it's impossible to pass the assessment by selecting all or by skipping questions. <music>